Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build a DIY storage box for your root vegetables. And since they need to be stored in a dark, cool, and moist location, I'm gonna be putting these in our cold cellar, which is in the back of our garage. And that means I need to critter proof these because we do have mice and rabbits and things that find their way in there somehow. So come hang out with me today and I'll show you how I'm building it. this container from Walmart this is just a sterilite container and I thought this would be a good size for where it's going so what I'm gonna do with this is cut out this little insert or just cut a square here and I'm going to cover it with this hardware cloth so that way it'll still be mouse proof to keep the mice out but it will be breathable so that the veggies in there can still have good airflow I'm also gonna drill some extra holes along the sides and the bottom just with the drill so what I'm gonna do to start, I'm gonna be using a jigsaw to cut out the top. So I'm taking a drill and you wanna make sure that the bit that you're using is bigger than the saw blade itself so that you have a starting point. Um, I'm gonna drill a hole in each of the four corners and that way you have a starting point to use your jigsaw in a straight line and you don't have to try to turn it around a 90 degree angle which could bend the blade. So first I'm just gonna drill those pilot holes. That last one cracked a little bit, but that's okay. That's not gonna hurt anything. Most of that's gonna be removed and that little crack is not big enough for mice to get in. So it won't be a problem. just realized the camera wasn't recording when I cut this out so sorry you missed that part but I did cut out the middle square now and I'm gonna drill some holes in the sides um, just to give it a little more airflow drilled now. I went around all four sides and drilled holes on the sides. I also did holes on the bottom because these are going to be sitting on shelves that have uh, not a solid bottom. They're wire shelves so I do want the airflow from the bottom as well. And I drilled a few extra holes on the outside of the square on the top here and I'm going to show you what those are for in a minute. That's how I'm going to attach the wire mesh. So next step is I'm just going to measure out a piece of this, cut it, and then I'll show you how I'm attaching it. So if you guys are new to my channel, let me just give you a little disclaimer here. I do not claim to be an expert at anything that I do. Uh, my motto is good enough is good enough. And I like to use materials that are either free or very inexpensive. I try to use things we already have whenever I can to just make do and um, see what I can get by with. So you'll see me here using these uh, wire cutters and after a minute or so, I get completely frustrated because they are not the right tool for this job. So you will see me switch over to my kitchen shears, which are Cutco kitchen shears, which are just the most amazing scissors you'll ever have. 
Um, and they are so much better at cutting through metal. And um, I even use them to cut through chicken bones when we're butchering too. They're amazing. So you'll see me switch to those in a minute here. <laughs> there they are. Watch this. Yep. Cut straight down the line effortlessly. Love those things. Anyways, as I was saying, I don't claim to be an expert. I am just showing you what I do to get by. Um, my husband, my three kids, and I live on a 65-acre homestead in Pennsylvania, and um, I do not have an extensive background in homesteading. I grew up in the suburbs. As an adult, I bought a house in the city. Um, it wasn't until I married my husband that I ended up moving to the country and just kind of fell in love with country life. And now we raise chickens. Um, we have hunting dogs. We have raised ducks and rabbits as well. I have a giant garden. And I try to grow as much food as possible for our family over the course of the year and preserve it and can it so that we can eat off of our own land as much as possible. So anyways, that's a little bit about us. And right now I'm going to show you how I'm using zip ties to attach this uh, wire mesh to the lid. So you just want to stick the zip tie through the hole on the one side and then just pop it up on the other side. And if I were smart, I would have uh, tucked the edges of that wire mesh under so there weren't any sharp edges sticking out on the sides because I did actually cut my fingers on this while I was doing it. Um, so if you do this at home, I would suggest just tucking under that last row of squares so that you don't have any sharp edges on the ends. But that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to zip tie that together and just snip off the edges or snip off the extra from those zip ties. clear so this room is hey buddy oh boy this room is in the back of our garden shed and it is mostly underground here which is nice for cold storage but it's also extremely extremely wet in here um, when we get heavy rain I've seen the floor actually fill up like you can probably see how high the water gets based on that watermark there. I mean, it'll be a pool, a swimming pool in here. So I have these wire shelves in here and I'm going to put some of my produce like up on this shelf so it's plenty high enough that it won't be underwater at any point in time. But I still want it low enough that it stays cool. Um, right now it's actually kind of warm in here. It's like warm and humid. Um, but anyways, that's where the potatoes are gonna go for now. So let me get those in the box. I went to our local Amish farmer's market this morning to buy potatoes because their potatoes are always really good quality. And buying potatoes locally at a market is way cheaper than buying seed potatoes from a catalog. And I'm hoping that these will last until March. This is kind of an experiment really to see if this is the right type of environment to store the potatoes so that they will stay fresh until I want to plant them in March. So hopefully it'll work out. But anyways, I'm just putting the potatoes into my lovely ventilated rodent proof box and then I'll slide them on the shelf. It is the beginning half of November as I'm putting these in here and I will keep you updated in this video about the progress of the potatoes as the winter goes on. So there we have it our potato box that is rodent proof we hope and ventilated 
in a cool, dark, it will be dark as soon as I turn that light out <laughs> when I get out of here. Cool, dark, moist environment and hoping that the potatoes will last. We'll have to uh, check on them together as the weeks go by. Okay, it is November 25th. I am checking on these potatoes that I've had stored down here in the cold cellar. A couple of them are starting to get little sprouts on them, so I'm just gonna flick those off and uh, hopefully that'll prevent it from growing too much. But it is nice and cool down here. So we'll just have to keep checking them and see how long we can get these to last. That one still looks okay. So I just came to check on my potatoes. Today is December 29th. So they've been in here for a while. I'll have to look up the date. Um, maybe I can put it in the description box for you, but they've been in here for, ooh, I would say probably close to a month now. Um, they're doing great. They're still firm. It's nice and cool in here. There are some of the potatoes are starting to grow like little sprouts on here. So what I'm doing is I'm just picking these off and you know just popping them off so that they stop growing and I will just continue to do that throughout the winter so that these potatoes will not put their energy into sprouting but that they will just continue to remain potatoes so anyways I'm just going to pick up all these little sprouts and I'm very happy with how this experiment is going so far all right, so I just came into the garden shed in the uh, cold cellar back here to check on the potatoes. And as soon as I got near the door, I smelled dead animal. So went and got the dog and he came and there were actually two dead rabbits in here. And I have no idea, like one of them was torn apart on the floor over there. I have no idea how something big enough to tear apart that rabbit got in here, let alone the two rabbits themselves. So a little creeped out, but it's a good thing I have these potatoes in a sealed case where nothing can get to them. But in other news, the potatoes are looking pretty good. It is almost time to plant these. So normally I would uh, just flick off the little buds that are starting to grow, but I might actually just let them go this time because I'm gonna be planting these in a couple weeks. So I think I'm just gonna let those buds continue to grow. They're small enough that I think I can nurse these along another couple weeks before I plant them. So that is the February 11th update. And this was a successful uh, storage of the potatoes. So excited about that. So to sum things up, when I store my potatoes inside the house, now these are grocery store potatoes, within a week or two, they look like this. They're wrinkly, they're smushy, they really just don't store well at all. And I, who knows how long they've been <laughs> sitting on the grocery store shelf or how long they sat in a warehouse before that. But even after like three weeks or four weeks, now they're looking like this. And Obviously, no one's eating that. So the uh, potato boxes that I built, keeping them down in the cold cellar, again, the conditions are dark, um, cool, and damp. And storing them like that, I put them in there in the first half of November. And this is the end of February, and they are still in a good enough condition to eat right now if I wanted to, which I'm not gonna eat them, I'm going to use them for seed. But um, that is why I wanted to start storing stuff down there. And the reason it took me so long to do that is because first I needed to build the boxes. Um, as I mentioned in the earlier video, we get rodents in there. There were rabbits. There were who knows what was in there eating the rabbits. I have no idea. But anyways, um, those boxes worked out really well. So I'm going to make some more of those and probably store a lot more of my root vegetables down there um, this coming winter. So anyways... That's it for today's video. Stay tuned because I am gonna have a lot more gardening stuff coming up now that it is almost March. 
and we're going to be doing some planting, some organizing, I have much more cleaning motivation coming your way, some more recipes. So stay tuned to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.